before I forget. Um, is the live session correct for them to send short video of players to critique swing? Um, we really prefer Discord or the text hotline. Um, a lot of folks now, they're using the text hotline. They're using the Discord chat. We're starting to see some folks that are getting into wanting a little more person-to-person, in-person type um, type atmosphere. I've started doing a lot of virtual lessons um, myself. Like I mentioned earlier, we're the only facility in the country that is certified to teach this program. We specialize in teaching just the Camwood system. Um, and we've been blessed to work with Camwood um, to kind of promote that as well. So if you want more than just what you're getting right now, don't hesitate to um, email me here at this, uh, this email right here. And we can talk a little more in depth about getting some more in-person stuff. If you're just wanting to send a few videos and ask a question or two, um, the best way to do that would be post that in the Discord chat or um, text the Camwood Bats hotline. I'll send that right here behind this as well. So the first email, that's going to be for any virtual lessons or any extra in-person lessons that you're looking for. Um, we can kind of help you find that. And then the phone number right there, that is the Camwood Bats text hotline. You can see all of that, um, the text hotline, you can see that on the Camwood Bats portal as well. Um, another question here. A player using a composite bat, never really swung a wood bat, thinks the feeling is odd, too much uh, vibration. Will lizard skin help or, ta or help by taping the handle, 10 you softball player. Um, any vibration that they're feeling out of the bat is because they're hitting it up here off the end more so than anything. The bat, the wood bat itself is going to feel a lot heavier than her softball game bat, especially for a softball player. Baseball players, it's not too different because once folks start swinging wood bats, by that time they're getting real close to being BB core bats. So they're able to move them through there. They're able to handle them just fine. Um, but nevertheless, her problem, my guess would be, is that she's pulling off a little bit to try to get the weight through there. And it's causing her bat to take a basically an angled path through the hitting zone. So she's kind of cutting across it like this, which is causing her to miss the ball just a little bit and catch it here rather than here. So I would really focus on her one-hand drill um, and kind of going through, you can do something like this, two two-and-twos, take her one-hander, two one-handers, two two-handers with her uh, two-hand bat, and then do two full swings right behind it with this, really putting an emphasis on the hands, kind of staying on line, staying straight, and letting that barrel naturally turn around rather than trying to force that barrel to contact like this. Recommendations on a speed gun that can do a job for measuring velocity, not only too expensive. Um, the one that I see being used the most, y'all can probably help me out, would be the pocket radar. I do believe it's going to be, I mean, when I looked at it, I thought, oh, I didn't want to spend that money. But you could probably get them, I don't know, if I'm wrong, tell me somebody, it's like 200 bucks, maybe 300 bucks-ish, give or take. <coughs> Excuse me. They work really well, and you can stick them in your pocket, tote them around anywhere. So I think it's kind of worth the investment. Um, to go back right here to this question, just because you made me think about it. Talking about the vibration off the end of the bat. You can see these balls I've got back here set up. Okay. A lot of folks are worried about contact point. Everybody, um, especially parents, you've probably heard coaches, you've heard, um, I mean, your, your player's teammate or whatever, holler out, tell them, be on time. I mean, get the bat there on time. Be on time to contact. Get the contact. Get the bat head out there. Um, all of that stuff, I mean, in an ideal world, yes, we'd love to be on contact. We'd love to get the bat head out there to pull extension. But – we have to take into consideration the game that we're playing. We're not hitting off the tee here. I mean, we're not going in a game, setting the tee up, 
and then hitting. We're hitting a ball that's moving, depending on what level you're at. For us, it was like 89 to 94. So we didn't necessarily – we weren't real good at being on time in 94. You ask major league players or elite college players, baseball players, higher level players, or your kid, ask them how easy it is to be on time. It's extremely hard to be dead on time to the ball. So if I'm trying to shoot for, in my head, if I'm trying to shoot for the point of contact like right there, well, y'all seen this before. Now I'm getting that off this part of the bat. I'm getting jammed. If I'm early, well, now – I'm getting off the end of the bat. That's when I'm trying to be perfect. That's when I'm trying to get to this position. A lot of folks see the picture um, on Instagram or whatever where the guy, I mean, is frozen at the point of contact. I have one of myself from years ago at Savannah State where I was just slammed, frozen. I think it was my wife that took the picture. I was just perfect right there. But if I'm shooting for that, it's going to cause my backpack to get out of line. If I accept that all I have to do is be on time or be in the way, just get to here and let it go through. Then eventually I'm going to get to that point right there. Boom. There I am. But now if I was a little late, I can shoot that ball the other way and I still look like I was on time or I can shoot this ball to left field, possibly hit it out of the park. And I look like I was even more on time. Only the hitter knows that I was later early. Okay. So again, if you're, if you have some problems with your players where they're getting a lot of contact off the end of the bat, my thought is that they're trying to get to this position right here. And it's causing that right there. You miss that sweet spot, I mean, by just the width of the ball. But if you're a baseball player, softball player, you understand that that right there is drastic when it comes to solid contact. All right, 300 for the pocket radar, 400 for pocket radar with the smart app function. So, makes sense. I mean, again, you tote it around in your pocket, it goes everywhere with you. I think it's worth the investment. Any other questions about the Camwood program? Or any issues that you're having? Don't forget, you are more than welcome to go to the reactions, click raise your hand and come on and talk out loud with me. I'm not one of those that likes to really hear themselves talk. I talk more than I like to just because I don't like to hear it quiet. I just don't like to hear myself talk. Still got folks joining in. Fantastic. Anybody also that does not have a Camwood bat, if you don't, or the Camwood program, um, this link right here is where you need to go spend some time I'll kind of walk you through what you're looking at when you go there. Um, that's going to take you to our All-American Program package section. There's a lot of different packages. Some of you may have the two-hander, but you don't have the one-hander. Um, some of you may have, I mean, both bats, but you don't have the program. You can kind of piece together what you don't have on that, on that page. The first two packages that you'll see are the two that you need to get or the one that you need to get. Um, if you don't have any of it, so many customers, I cannot tell you guys how much we deal with this. So many customers come through and buy the one or buy the two hander by itself. And they think they're going to see these great improvements and they see improvement. But if I told you, this is what your kid could see. Why? I mean, I don't know a parent in the world that would want to short change their kid. So again, for 250 bucks, you get like all this right here and the training program all to yourself, boom, right there to you. So if you do not have that, I highly suggest, please do that. Um, somebody said they purchased sweet spot bat. What's your take on that? I really love the sweet spot bat to teach with um, more so than I do to swing, um, mainly because I like the feel of how it tells me I'm, I like the feel of getting real, real stung. I mean, I like natural wood bat. The race speed sweet spot, to me, it throws my eyes off. A lot of people love the red 
because for younger kids, it helps them really be able to see where that sweet spot's traveling. You can see it right there. When I take that good path, y'all see how far out front these balls are. I mean, that ball right there is a foot and a half in front of my front foot. If I stay on path, I can get to that one right there. I mean, that's so much hitting zone, y'all. I'm blowing my mind standing here looking at it. But the sweet spot to me is going to help you teach where this barrel needs to stay. It's going to help kids really have a visual of what they're looking at. Um, and it's also going to be good for kids that are struggling. For example, if they're trying to do this to the ball, trying to punch that top hand, then I a lot of times make them swing the sweet spot back um, to really see the red out front. If you're pushing the red, you're going to see the red back here. Okay, I don't want to see the red back here. I never want to make contact with the ball back here. I need that red to be moving up here through the ball, no matter where it's at. So again, great tool to use. Uh, if you're a coach, I highly recommend using it to teach with. Teach line of the pitch. If you have never heard line of the pitch or how we, what that means, feel free to ask too. That's always a great, great point for folks to, folks to understand. I have a six-year-old who makes great contact, soft toss, underhand flip, but is a little off the barrel with overhand coach pitch. Any tips? Um, six years old, I would just, I would just not, I wouldn't rush. Um, again, I know a ton of seven and eight-year-old kids that are in the same boat as him. He's a lot farther ahead than a lot of seven and eight-year-old kids that I see. So don't be in such a hurry to get him to here. Um, really focus on the gradual mechanical improvements that he's going to make. Really focus on his hand path. Um, if he doesn't have a cam wood or if you do have a cam wood, use the one-hand trainer. I would probably recommend the one-hand trainer for him. Have him swing it with two hands. All it's going to do is make kids that um, have never swung a bat before naturally feel the way it should go right off the bat. If I had this, if this was the first bat that I ever swung in my life, it would have been so much better for me and all the players that I know. This would be such a great tool to have them really training with um, off a tee, front toss, soft toss as well. But, again, don't be in such a hurry to go to overhand pitch. I'd make sure that he was just, I mean, absolute smashing balls on front toss. I mean, could not miss before I tried to get him into overhand pitch. Just because he's still got, I mean, I may be wrong, but, I mean, down here he's still got a year or two before he's really playing uh, pitch machine. Some of them are playing t-ball now, but um, kids down here, they start pitch machine, I think, before they do coach pitch. I don't even know if we do coach pitch down here, honestly. But that's kind of my take on that. Really focus on his hands. You can never get your hands, I mean, too much in this position. What batting tee is that with the three tees? That's going to be drill pro tee. Um, the Cam Wood drill pro tee is one of my favorites to use. Obviously, behind me here, you can see I have the, the insider tee. Um, the insider tee is the one that we use a lot when we're dealing with lefty-righty kids hitting together. Just because we don't have to switch the whole setup of the tee, um, we can basically just swap the insider rod back and forth. So if you're going to be dealing with a lot of that, um, as long as the tee's not going to be moving around, if you're going to deal with a lot of that, probably get both, truthfully. But if you're just one of them that's needing a tee at the house um, for your kid to work on, go with the Drill Pro tee. You're going to get a lot much longer use out of that just because you're able to add those pieces as you go instead of having to come back by a whole nother tee. So, again, that's my take on that. Day four into the All-American program with my son, um, what type of advice would you give to an inexperienced batting coach? Perfect, because I think the next question is going to ask the same thing we're going to talk about. It. Yep. All right. This is the number one thing that I think hitting coaches, any hitting coach, anybody that ever wants to be a hitting coach, anybody that wants to ever help their kid be a better hitter, we have to understand this concept. The line of the pitch, all the time as a hitter, you should always be looking for a fastball, number one. The reason is because 
every hitter and most every at bat is going to see at least one fastball, okay? At least one in each at bat. So if I know I'm going to see a, a fastball that moves like this, it's the only pitch that's thrown to you that moves straight, besides the change up, but that one dips out. This is the easiest pitch to hit, okay? If I know I'm going to see one of those in every at bat, I should be building a swing that's going to give me the most opportunity to make contact with that pitch. Correct? I think everybody said right. So if that's the case, this is what I know about a fastball. It moves in this line. And as you can see, when I had it turned like this, it had a slight downhill tilt to it. Okay. Going down the hill. You got a pitcher on the mound, catcher in a squat, balls, common sense tells you it's going downhill. The line of the pitch, if I'm thinking about the barrel, okay, like I was showing you earlier, and I'm trying to get to the point of contact. All right, well, back here, I'm jammed. So my sweet spot's out of line with the pitch. Up here, okay, you can see I'm missing it kind of right there in the middle. Okay, so again, my barrel is a little bit out of line with that pitch. It doesn't take much, y'all, to get your barrel to move a lot. You move your hand like half an inch, your barrel's gonna move like an inch. Um, we have four thousandths of a second, Major League Baseball players, four thousandths of a second to make contact with that pitch for those two objects, bat and the ball, to collide. So you don't have a ton of time. Anything you do to take your bat out of position of that line is going to cause the things that we all hate, getting jammed, rolling over, off the end of the bat, pop-up, strikeouts. And it all, every single thing we teach goes back to this. Anything that a kid has wrong in their swing, I always try to address it based off of this concept. What's going on in their body or their hands or their lower half or their head or whatever that's causing them to get their barrel out of line with that pitch? I mean, we're talking about like two cars driving down the road in two separate lanes. If one crossed over, they're hitting dead on. So if all we have to do is keep this in the same lane as the ball, this is the car. I don't want my hand to hit the ball. I want my hand to pass the ball, okay? I want my barrel to hit the ball. Man, that makes sense right there, y'all. I want to drive my knob inside of there like a car in a separate lane and let my barrel whip through. Anything that I do to take that car out of its own lane, one way or the other, it's going to affect where that barrel goes, okay? I mean, that right there, if you can understand that concept, if your player can understand that concept right there, they will be a great hitter. They, well, I say they'll be a great hitter. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of work. They'll have the opportunity to be a great hitter because it first starts with knowledge. You have to know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to keep my bat in that line as long as possible so I can make solid contact. Um, Sean, I hope that answered your question. And Jeffrey, I hope that answered your question. If it did not, please tell me what I need to elaborate on. I'm more than happy to do it. 15 years old, good, good deal. Um, that's a great age, y'all, telling you. To me, 15 years old is like, you're real close at that point to, if you don't change, if you don't get this in your blood now, you don't learn how this works now and train your body how to do it now, it just gets harder to do it from here. So, Man, the younger you can get your kids on this, folks, I'm telling you, the better it's going to be for everybody. Everybody. Thirteen-year-old struggling with staying inside the ball, doing 10-day, 100%, pulling a lot of balls. Uh, my first question would be, have they been through the 30-day program? A lot of folks do, they, they'll buy the program or they'll buy whatever um, and they go to there and they see that the 10 day is first. Well, the only reason that the 10 day is first is because everybody that purchases from Camwood gets access to that page. They all get access, they buy the bat, they get access to that 10 day. They do not all get access to the Camwood 30 day program. So for you, you have access to the program, do that first, highly recommend doing that first because again, um, if you go to Swing Shop Official on Instagram, you'll see a video I made about this exact thing today. Bat speed 
All right. We have to understand what back speed is too. Okay. If I'm just trying to be fast with the barrel, if I'm just trying to get the barrel to the ball as quick as I can, look at all this back here, folks. Wearing my hands out, wearing them out. Long swing. I may have a fast bat speed. The ball may come off my bat hard if I hit it perfect. But is that really bat speed? I mean, is that really playing into the game? Is that really helping your player have more bat speed and be successful in the game? No, it's not. So bat speed is not how fast we can move the barrel. It's how fast can you move the lightest thing on this stick, the knob. A lot of times we get the weight in too bad of a position to where the knob, when we pull the knob, it takes the weight around or it takes the weight down, all right? You'll see a lot of our hitters kind of all have the bat right here in the same spot because that just about the most comfortable place for that weight to settle so that when I drive the knob, boom, I've matched the plane. I don't have to do anything else. Nothing else in my swing has to get me on plane except that right there. The line of the pitch is the fastball coming in straight, understanding how the fastball works and understanding how our hands have to work. Okay. A lot of folks were taught, um, a lot of folks will say, I mean, you got to stay straight to the ball. You got to stay straight to the ball. But the line that they're referring to, I was taught knob to the ball. You set a ball on the tee, you take the knob and go back to the ball like that. That's totally contradicting the line I just showed you. So some people are still building their swing based off of this line of the pitch concept. That's not the concept. This is the line of the pitch concept we always have to remember. Fastball is never coming from over there. Fastball always comes from the pitcher, and it's always moving in a downhill slope all the time. When you go up in levels, you'll see two seamers, whatever. That's just that's just the game getting harder. So, yeah, fast, or the line of the pitch is going to be more so about what the fastball is doing, understanding how that moves. That's going to help you have a better understanding of how I need to move to get to it and stay in line with it. Yes, this right here. Um, person says, my understanding is that the cam would helps the batter bring their hands to the ball in order to get the bat to the plane of the ball, correct. This assess, uh, at this point, the bat then has to whip through the zone. Yeah, if you see me, I mean, if I held this bat, held the knob and pulled it, as hard as I could pull it, at some point when it slips out of my hand, the bat's whipping. I didn't turn it. I can't even turn it that fast, I don't think. It's just gonna whip through the zone, okay? That's what we wanna feel. We wanna feel a little bit of resistance with the barrel and real, Pull with that knob so that we get that whip. Otherwise, we're going to get more of that through the zone. Great understanding of the concept. That's exactly what you want. That's exactly why we use the bat. It's exactly why we use it. Any other questions? The weight in the base of the bat, I'm assuming you're talking right here. This is just a little bit of added weight. It's like a one pound, I mean, not pound, one ounce or two added weight right here to just give a little more, I mean, reinforcement down here. Um, this is the main weight that we're focused on here because this is what's really going to build your forearm strength. Um, a lot of folks don't understand. They swing these bats and they think they're too heavy. They're not too heavy. They're just making you feel like you're going to the gym. It's real hard if I'm having a loose grip and I'm not trying to be real strong in my forearm to hold that bat on plane. I've got to really kind of tighten my forearm up. You see my forearm up here. I got to tighten my forearm up and keep it tight to hold that bat on plane. All right, so this is the weight that's really going to help. It's going to help you drive this way and it's going to help you learn how to support it with your top hand, keep palm pressure on your bottom hand and drive through there rather than trying to throw that weight at the ball. That's what happens with so many kids. They train with a bat that's got weight at the end and they're throwing the weight at the ball. 
they're not strong enough yet to know how to move that like that. Yeah, above your hands. That that's how that's what the weight, that's the main weight we're focused on. Um, yes, grip tightness. We we always talk loose grip. The number one reason is because, I mean, think about the bat whip. If I have a real tight grip on the handle and I let this go, the bat came that way. It didn't go through the ball. Okay. I've got to really have a loose grip and almost have like like if I put my hand around this bat and didn't close it, you gonna see the space in there. And then slid it down just enough to where my hand's not gonna slide off the end of it, okay? And then I'm just trying to push the knob off the bat. I'm trying to like pull the knob, pull the handle right off the bat. Pull through the zone so that whips through. If I do that tight, the bat's just gonna turn around real slow and it's putting that barrel out of position. Um, question here, number one best uh, drill for the two-hand cam wood bat is obviously our no feet, no shoulders drill, two hands, okay? Let's try to move all my stuff out of the way. We basically isolate what our hands are doing. Our lower half is the only part of the swings rotating, okay? My upper body has to try to hold this line as best it can so my hands can take that straight path to the ball we're talking about. The best way to focus on learning that, learning how to do that, is to have your player line straight up to the tee, ball on the outside corner, front foot just a little bit. I mean, I put my big toe in line with the tee stem. And then right there, all we're focused on doing is having a real stiff front side and driving that knob like I say, drive it into the wall. Imagine there being a wall right there and I'm trying to bust the knob down with the knob of the back. The more I can just drive, when I get to a certain point, the bat has, at, the, at full speed, the bat has no choice but to whip through the zone, okay? My barrel was able to stay right in line with that ball. I stayed right in line with that ball. And if that would have been a full swing, you would have seen my lower half fire first and I would have finished over here. I didn't turn up here, I just drove my knob. So we learned how to stay on line, no feet, no shoulders, hands loose, and we just focus on driving the knob inside the ball. Uh, do I recommend uh, the one-hand bat as well? I absolutely do. Um, the one-hand bat, to me, my personal opinion, it would have been my saving grace as a hitter. I was taught that my top hand gets me to extension. So many players are taught that their top hand gets them to extension. We see so many people buy this bat and put it in their top hand, working the same concept, trying to get the top hand to extension. All that's doing, if I'm taking my top hand to the ball, is taking my barrel around, okay? There's no way I could go at full speed and keep the barrel working straight with my top hand. That's why at some point my bottom hand or my top hand has to release and my bottom hand has to finish that swing. The one-hander is going to help players understand and learn how that bottom hand has to get me all the way through the ball. The top hand is just there to support the weight past it. Once I get the full extension, top hand's done. The, the looseness of my grip is going to let that bat whip through, and I don't need to do this with my top hand. 30-day um, program. 30-day program is going to give you the full layout blueprint of how to do this, what to do. There are so – all of this um, – all of this stuff that we're talking about, there's, like, so much more involved in it. 
You're going to get access to our text hotline, to um, all of these virtual sessions that we do each week. Um, you get access to the full blueprint layout of the program that gives you the exact what drills to do, how many swings to take for 30 days to see the most improvement. This is by far the best. I mean, if you're looking for the sheet instructions on what do I do with this, that's what you do. Like I was saying earlier, so many folks come and they buy the two-hander and they miss out on the whole, I mean, all the stuff in the middle of the sandwich. They buy the bread and nothing in the middle of the sandwich. Nobody wants that. You need to get the full thing. This right here is going to make the two-hander so much easier to use. So many people have trouble with the two-hander just because you don't have one of these. So I'm new to this bat. What weight size uh, girls swing a 33? Um, 33, always recommend going with the same length. So for them, go with the same length cam wood as their game bat. Uh, it's going to be, I believe, 33 plus 6 is going to be 39 ounces for them. All softball models are plus 6 ounces. Baseball models, we kind of have a split. Adult models are plus 12 extra weight for the uh, big baseball players. And then the youth models for all of our 8, 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old kids is plus 6, like the softball. We have sizes 26 inch all the way up to 34 inch for the two-hand trainer. Like this one you see here, um, the one-hand trainer is always matched to the two-hander that you get. So if you're going with the program through that link I just posted, um, you want to just worry about this. Pick the same length. Don't worry about the weight. Get the same length the kid's swinging now. We'll match this to that bat. Um, you'll get an email with the link to access the program. And every single person in here that's already involved in it would tell you that you need to do it. You need to do it. When you complete 30 day, what is the next step? We have a part two. Basically the number one thing everybody tries to understand once they learn to swing off the tee is how do I get this into the game? It's such a hard thing to do. But we have to basically keep the same kind of process, but there's more drills that we add. Obviously, we start throwing balls. We have new uh, variations of drills, how we do them now that balls are in motion. But again, that's going to be what the part two is all about. So basically, you purchase the first one. A lot of folks go through the 30-day program, I mean, a handful of times. It takes a lot longer than 30 days to learn it. 30 days is the process. This is what you need. This is how you're going to do it. Some kids, it may take 90 days to learn it. Some kids it may take 365 days, as bad as I hate to say it. It's just, that's how it is. Um, it also goes into making sure that you're instructing it the right way. That's another reason we offer this. That's another reason that I've started offering the virtual lessons is because parents are having a little more questions than what we've answered in the actual blueprint. So we're giving you access to full-time kidding coaches I mean, for just the price of 250 bucks. I mean, you're going to spend that in two or three lessons with a hitting coach. And you're not going to see near the improvement that you're going to see in here. Um, this afternoon, we'll be posting a video on our Swing Shop YouTube channel, Swing Shop, go to The Swing Shop. Um, you'll find us. And we hit with a kid from California two weekends ago. This weekend, not this weekend, next weekend, we're going to California to hit with them again. Um, but it's about a seven or eight minute video and you can see how from the first swing he takes to the last swing he takes in that video, you can watch the drastic improvements that he's making. You can see how he's understanding stuff in ways he's never understood it. And that's, I mean, a kid that got connected with us virtually that felt like he needed to come do this in person. I mean, you're going to get what you pay for folks. There's no doubt about it. You're going to have to pay somebody at some point to help teach your kids something that you don't know. My, the best thing my dad ever did for me was find somebody else to teach me. He did not play. He did not know hitting. He did not know baseball. And this was not around. Nobody knew about this. So I talked to him the other day. We were talking about going – I was telling him about going to California hitting with this kid. And he was just telling me about how, my goodness, if that kind of stuff would have been available, there's no doubt they'd have paid to do it. It feels like a little chunk at the beginning. It feels like I was eating a little bit of my pocketbook. But when you look at it over a grand scheme of things, I mean, they, their, their ability is taught and it's paid off, like a college loan, paid off right then. 
Now it's up to them to take all that knowledge, all those tools that they were just given, take the blueprint and go home and learn how to do it. So again, I cannot stress enough how important it is for those of you that don't have it. You need this in your life. Youngest child can start the system. Um, we really kind of gauge it based off of their size. We've had some six-year-olds begin it. Um, obviously, at that age, the younger you get, the slower you have to go. It's not going to be a 30-day deal. It's going to be more of like, you know, I can't. It's really going to be played by ear. Some kids are going to gain a lot more strength a lot quicker. Some kids, it's just going to take a little time. Um, so always start. If you're having questions about size of your kid, for example, a six-year-old kid, I would highly recommend going and getting the All-American program now. If he swings like a 26-inch bat and it's too heavy, I would probably get him just a 26-inch bat and lay his cam wood over there and be ready to go when he's strong. You already have access to the program, so you can take the one-hander and do everything with the one-hander. One-hand drills, two-hand drills, weight shift pipe, the whole thing. Every drill we teach, you can do with the one-hander. If the one-hander is too heavy for him to do with one hand, just start him out on the two-hander. That's not a problem. Again, he's six years old. So once he gains strength, then he's going to be able to go back and kind of not necessarily relearn it. He's already learned it, but now he's got to retrain it. Now he's stronger. Now he's got to train his body how to move and use his muscles the right way so that his strength isn't taking him out of the zone. It's getting him through the zone. I'm like the my pillow guy. Ah, that's funny. Um, dude, I'm telling you, I am so passionate about what I do, about what we get to do. Um, nobody really, nobody in here especially really knows my story. I came, grew up in Cairo, um, South Georgia, small town. Really no big name players ever come out of here except for Jackie Robinson. Yes, sir. He's born and raised right here. Not raised, but born right here in, in Cairo, Georgia. Um, I drive right past the chimney that's still sitting there where his house used to be every day um, on the way to and from work. So that's cool. But baseball was always a part of my life. Like I said, my dad didn't play it. I was the only person in my family that was an athlete. Um, in all honest opinion, I really felt like my dad was a pastor, number one. That's something I think that um, that's something I tell everybody. And because of that, you could probably guess that the first thing I was taught was about my salvation. Um, and I also learned as I grew and as I got older, as I realized, man, I'm pretty good at this game, that God had given me a gift. And anytime somebody gives you a gift, anytime you have an ability or a talent, you need to develop that talent. And so my parents just pounded that into me. So I went to work just swinging, swinging, swinging. Dad realized that, man, he's pretty good. He's got a passion for it. I can't teach him anything because Camwood's not here. Um, I got to go find somebody. Well, there was a guy that was from my hometown, played at my high school. Um, he had got drafted, played for the Marlins for a real small period of time, and he had moved back home. Um, he became my hitting coach. His hitting coach was a guy named uh, Jack Maloof, who was connected also to Tony Gwynn. Ain't that crazy? Um, so my hitting coach and Trey's hitting coach both had ties to Tony Gwynn. They were both taught nod to the ball. But the concept I mentioned earlier, nod to the ball, some things were just, I mean, lost in translation. I learned things a little bit off. Um, and I worked hard. It took so much work to get the success that I earned. I mean, at one point I was uh, came right out of high school, went to junior college, Chattahoochee Valley Community College in Phoenix City, Alabama. Um, did not get one hit the whole fall season. I was probably, I may have been 155 pounds soaking wet, but I could play shortstop pretty good. They told me I could come walk on, so I went. Um, ended up having an opportunity to redshirt after the fall. Decided that I didn't want to do it, mainly because I was homesick. Um, I really missed being home. This was just always, I just liked this place. So I moved back home, went to a school that was here in town, played a semester there and kind of turned it all back around. I felt like I kind of got my fire back, had some success against junior college teams. Um, uh, I 
I won the MVP award that year for that team and just knew that staying there, the program that I was in right there, it had kind of capped out. A lot of times you'll meet people, some of you are in jobs like this where your boss, the business could be doing so much better, but it's doing like this right here. And it's like, he's got a lid on the top of it. Well, this college was like that. They were only going to put out one player every 20 years. And so I had some success. I felt like, man, I could, I could go back and compete now. I, I feel like I could get away from home. I've kind of figured out that this is really what I want to do. If I want to play baseball, I got to get away from home. So I left again, went back to another junior college, played my semester there. Um, we started out real bad, came up, had a good run, made it to the playoffs. I ended up hitting 380 that year, transferred from there to Savannah State. Uh, my first year at Savannah State had a real down year, could not be on time. I got jammed a bunch. I struck out a bunch, um, just struggled real bad. That summer I played, went off by myself and played in a summer league. Just kind of had the whole summer to myself and worked out, kept my body in shape, tried to do everything that I knew how to do and that I knew to do to give myself the best opportunity to play professional baseball. That was the end goal for me. Um, that's what I wanted to do. And came back my senior year at Savannah State, led the team, hit 311, um, hit a couple home runs that year. And had an opportunity to go to a minor league camp. So I mean, went to a minor league camp, spent two weeks down there, had some talks with a couple independent teams and decided that I wanted to go home and coach. So I came back here to my hometown and started teaching and coaching. Just a couple years later, that's when Trey called me and asked me to come work for Camwood Bats. Um, so that's kind of how my whole life has played out. The only way folks that I got to where I'm at right now um, was because I tried to be really good at hitting. Um, again, I, I, this was told to me so many times, if you hit, you'll play. And if you're a coach, you know, if the kid's hitting, you're not taking that kid out of the lineup. I don't care what he does, what he says, how he acts, that kid's playing, especially if you like win. And I know what I know about this bat. If we can get this in the hands of kids, if I can sell you on it like the My Pillow guy, all it's going to do is make your kid better and it's going to make his enjoyment in this game so much greater. There was so much, um, so many mental battles that you fight. I mean, the game is built off of failure. The whole game's built off of failure. So you can't, you can't deal with failure. You're not going to be able to deal with this. And we have to kind of use this to help kids understand that I'm not trying to get hits here. I'm not trying to be perfect. It's so impossible, folks, to be perfect. Even in life, you cannot be perfect. I've just got to try to get in the right position. If I can put myself in the right position, good things are going to happen. No matter if I'm late, early, or on time. Hmm. I'll preach. That'll preach. Somebody better cut me off. I'll read this. Purchased a Camwood uh, a couple months ago. Confused about access to the program. Do I need to uh, purchase the program by itself on the site? I have my receipt. Yes, that's exactly what you need to do. If you have the one-hander, already then you just need the access to the 30-day program so the 97 dollars access if you just have this bat then you need the 147 dollar package that'll give you the one-hander and access to the program again this training tool right here i could do so much with this bat with so many kids if they never knew about this we could change their swing with this right here it all starts here $500 back, can't fix $5 swing. Hey, that'll preach. Martin said, over three virtual lessons, my son increased his bat speed by 10 uh, from 53 to 63 with a drop three. That's for real. That happened. That happened. And a lot of that, I mean, that's not just us. That's not just how we teach. A lot of that goes into the, the mindset of the player, um, the mindset of the parent how the player's willing to work, how hard are they willing to work, um, how bad do they really want to change their success. I mean, the only reason you're grabbing this, in my opinion, should be to make yourself a better hitter. If you're grabbing this just to increase bat speed, you're creating bad speed. I mean, that's all that's going to happen. You're just going to be swinging a boat paddle. So good luck.
I mean, this is going to make people better at hitting. So buy it and read the instructions. Learn how to go through it. Take advantage of every single avenue that we give you. The virtual le lessons is the newest one. I mean, folks, that right there, Martin would tell you, just sitting and talking will do so much for a lot of the players. It'll do so much for them without even taking a swing. One hundred thirty day program. How do we get those two items? This link right here. Um, if you'll click this link, Kevin, I'm going to click it with you and it should take me. It's going to be the package right in the middle. Top row right in the middle says an all American 30 day program plus one hander. And if your kid, um, how old your kid? I'll tell you what size to get. Oh, my bad. I posted it to James. Hang on. There it is. Package right in the middle. <laughs> Nine youth one hand trainer. 20 inch, 23 ounce. How important is it to get a radar reading uh, before the program? Not really at all. Again, I mean, we kind of came on scene because everybody started hearing about the bat speed increases. Everybody wanted to get better bat speed. So they heard about Campbell, they go through the program and whoa, they took radar at the beginning, took radar at the end, and they see 10 mile an hour exit velocity. Um, if you're curious to know where they start, where they finish, I mean, I've always recommend it because it just gives us, it just gives us more, I mean, car, I don't know what I'm doing, cards in my pocket. I mean, I just got so many cars to play. This kid saw 10, this kid saw 30, this kid saw 15, this kid saw 12, this kid saw 11. I mean, and none of those numbers I just said are wrong. So if you can radar it at the beginning and the end, great. If you can't, do not worry about it. Focus, take a video. Tell me what his swing looked like when he started and then take a video at the end. Show me what it looked like at the end. You'll be just as pleased with that video as you would be the picture of the radar gun. Oh, goodness. Solid can would swing without releasing the top hand. Yes, I possibly can. Um, a lot of folks, a lot of folks worry about the top hand being released. Um, they feel that you're just much stronger with your top hand, okay? I'm not telling you that you cannot finish a swing with two hands. Me, myself, I was never able to finish a swing in a game with two hands, or excuse me, with one hand. For some reason, every time I hit off the tee, let me slide this up. Every time I hit off the tee, I just get, I mean, I always had a nice smooth, one hand release, okay? In games, my swing was a lot shorter and quicker and faster, but you can also see that my barrel's moving through the zone a lot farther back, okay? So again, this is with one hand releasing. This is with two hands. And I'm gonna try to hit it good, so I'm not gonna like try to go like make it look bad. I'm solid. The key there, this is what I felt. This is how I figured this stuff out. The key there is to have a loose grip with that top hand. You can't get there and go wham with that top hand. You've got to continue to let your, your bottom hand finish. My top hand stayed on the bat, but it was so loose that, I mean, all it did was get pulled by the bat around. I'll do it again. Oh, it's hit pretty good. Uh, here's another thing for any of y'all that are willing to travel um, within driving distance. This summer, my facility is doing a basically doing a six week camp. Um, kids can come by the week. They can come a couple weeks. Most kids are coming all six weeks. We wanted to offer this to you guys. It's fifty dollars a week, folks. Fifty dollars a week, um, nine to twelve Monday through Thursday. We start June the sixth uh, through the ninth. That'll be the first week, three weeks in June, three weeks in July, we're doing it. You have questions about that? Email me. Here's another one with two hands. I'll give you a second. Can anybody tell the difference? I could. I rolled over my top hand.
Any other questions, folks? I'll tell it to you like this, because, I mean, everybody's going to teach what they want to teach. They're really going to teach what they want to believe. I believe in releasing the top hand because I have so much more extension with my bottom hand that direction than I do with my top. Okay, It's going to get out there more, which means my barrel can get out there farther, which means I can possibly be a little earlier or make a little more solid contact on a pitch that I would have normally missed. Um, but you kind of have to pick your poison. Some kids that finish, like for example, I can tell you Trey. Trey was a top man releaser. All right. Most of his misses were going to be rollovers to the right side and we're going to be pop ups this way. More pop ups because the barrel has, a more, has more of a tendency to drop if my pressure doesn't stay there. Okay. When I swing and keep the top man on the back, I have more of a possibility to hit a lot of rollovers to the shortstop third baseman or to the pool side, hit a lot of balls foul because my top man has a tendency to want to go there too soon. Okay. That's one reason. I mean, reason number 9,078, why you need to train as often as possible. These drills are so important to do as often as you can do them. So muscle memory stays good. My son got so strong doing the system. How do I know when he should go up in bat size? Um, how old is he? How long, uh, how long did he swing the size he's got? Thirteen, usually thirty-one. Um, thirty-one drop eight, five, three. I'd probably go ahead and get him thirty-one. Yep, thirty-one adult. Go ahead to thirty-one adult. Um, how long has he swung a drop three? For a year. I go 31 adult. Just started, yeah, 31 adult with the adult one hander. I wouldn't go to a two, I wouldn't go up in size until he got ready to go to a 33 inch game bat or he felt the 31 was too light. Any others before we wrap up today? Camp's location, K Road, Georgia. K Road, spelled like Cairo. We are located in southwest Georgia, about 40 miles north of Tallahassee, Florida. Best places to stay. You can stay in Cairo. Um, I'd probably rather stay in Thomasville. You're going to have nicer hotel options. Not that the ones here are bad. You just have like one hotel. Um, Thomasville or Tallahassee would be where I would stay. I recommend staying. Could possibly stay in Bainbridge, which is here's Cairo, here's Thomasville, here's Bainbridge. Tallahassee's down here. How do I get access to the virtual lessons? Please email me here. As I stated earlier, for those of you that were not here, um, I am the CEO of Camwood Bats as well as the lead instructor. I also own my own facility here in Cairo. Um, and we have been blessed to be the only certified Camwood facility in the country, um, mainly because we do this every day. Um, we fully believe in it, and we have been able to dig deeper and deeper into this program and find simpler and easier and more efficient ways to help kids accomplish what everybody wants to accomplish, which is making solid contact. The number one thing we try to do. So email me there, and um, we'll talk to you about our different virtual lesson options. Any others? I'm going to give you till 2.05. Two minutes. That's 2.05 my time. Where are you all located? Let's see if I can get 31 people to tell me where you're at. 
San Diego, Boston, St. Louis, New Jersey. Miami, Monroe, I've been close to Miami. Cali, Long Beach, Maryland, Philly, Cali, Petaluma, I'm assuming. That's how you say that? Perfect. Got it right. Also, if there's any like hunters in here, Go look that up on YouTube, please. Y'all would probably enjoy my crazy tale. I film a few hunts now and then. San Jose, uh, Milwaukee, Chicago. Awesome. Folks, thank you so much, again, for joining in. Um, this is truthfully like one of my favorite parts of the week because we just get to sit here and talk about this for an hour. Um, without interruptions. I really appreciate you coming in, asking questions. Again, if you have any questions about virtual lessons um, or, I mean, just any extras, anything that you need in regards to, for example, I'm not seeing what I need to see or I'm not seeing what I think I should see um, results-wise, or I'm having issues with this, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Do not hesitate. If you haven't purchased it, do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor um, and jump on the train with us. This is one of those trains that's not going to stop because you're talking about the concept of a straight line. I mean, if you've been in here for the last hour, hopefully this makes so much sense to you why we teach what we teach and how this is actually playing into your game. There have been so many people that we have taught this around that we're not baseball players, we're not hitters, did not know anything about hitting that said, man, that makes so much sense. And it seems like it's so easy to do, but I couldn't imagine trying to do it myself because it's, it's one of those things. It's, that's the beauty of it. It's so easy to do when you watch it. So easy to do once you've kind of figured it out and you're just standing here repping it out. But man, it is tough to accomplish um, when you're trying to build up to it. Waiting for my bats for my seven-year-old. Should be here Friday. Fantastic. Fantastic. I thought there was something else that I was going to say, and I can't remember what it was. Last call. Any questions before we go? Seven-year-old makes great contact, pulls everything. Any drill to help push the ball. Don't think about pushing. Think about pulling that knob. Pull that knob, okay? Pull the knob. The more I push with my arm, the more I push, the farther the bat's getting away from the line of the pitch, okay? This right here behind me, this line right here, I'm trying to match that line with my bat inside so my barrel comes through that ball, okay? Really focus on driving the elbow. The elbow's good. Folks will tell you that's a good key. For my bat to go the right way, my elbow's got to get out of the way. Let me stop. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Email me if you have questions. See you next week.